Hey, welcome to a little uh, behind the AFT stream. We're going to get uh, a little bit of stuff done tonight. We're going to talk about the changes coming to our world of Courageous, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to handle that. So this is some of the behind the scenes of what's coming up in our regular stream. I am Joe. I am the host of Adventures from the Shed, Adventures from the Stream. Um, we have both audio and video podcasts. We have streams to check out. Make sure you find us on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Twitch, all around the place. Uh, welcome to, and let's get started with a couple of things. First off, um, today, one of the things I'm going to be doing is playing some of my um, favorite background music as we get going. So I'm going to get that started. So first, that's at, now, as you can see here on the screen, that's Fessalian Studios. Um, I started their royalty-free background music area. And since you can play it right from the page, I'm going to the fantasy category and I'm going to pick the um, the first one in the list and hit play and it's going to automatically move on to the next and the next and the next. So we're going to have that in the background while we're talking about what's going on here. Now, um, let me go back to our Foundry virtual tabletop. For those following the stream, what you're going to remember is we left off in... Uh, Daramon's lair as a dragon's lair and we have this spot here where our characters are just about to walk into um, the dragon's main what, what used to be the dragon's uh, resting spot it's actually lair proper where its horde was part of what we had explored last time was that Ali uh, had found some information in a book uh, where these kobolds had been gathering that was uh let's see that was back up here in the map and where those kobolds have been gathering there was a book of some of the things they used to do bad things um going out trying to find stuff for the dragon for the dragon's inevitable return uh, apparently these kobolds are are born of the dragon um, some of the backstory there that the the characters don't know at this point whether they explore it or not we'll find out uh, but the dragon before becoming a draco lich was very interested in in raising a um army's not the right word but more of a following uh, uh daramon wanted dragons in his likeness but also to improve so as a red dragon he had some limitations however when it came down to um uh, what he wanted out of the world. He wanted to be able to bring forth another dragon race, but not a uniform, like everybody's this way, everyone's that way. So he was experimenting basilisks and um, great cats and what have you, and um, kind of melding them with kobold DNA. And that was part of what we had learned when the... the the player characters were fighting on, uh, with the kobolds that were here in Daramon's lair. Uh, now, daramon has been gone for quite some time, and that, uh, that group of kobolds, the mutant kobolds that were left behind, they're more of a hybrid than a mutant, but um, they're still expecting Daramon's eventual return, and they're, they're still trying to gather things for the dragon, for when the dragon returns to its lair, greets them, you know, everyone's a big happy family again. Now it's been, I think in game terms, we're probably talking about, I don't know, maybe a hundred years since this happened, maybe a little less, but um, these kobolds aren't really keeping track of time. They're underground waiting for, you know, the, the dragon who helped create them to return. They have been uh, knowing that uh, Daramon is a big fan of platinum, crude platinum. Uh, they have been uh, out and about trying to find some of that over the years. And when, when they go someplace and they're unable to find it, uh, sometimes they'll take what they can find and 
Other times they'll just grab some of the inhabitants of the place and force them into what they call the mines, which is really almost underground from where the Dragon's Lair is now. There are some rich uh, platinum veins underground and they will force some, some of the um, captives that they've found in different places to go underground and mine for them. What we're going to do there is kind of fast forward from what we learned in that adventure, which is or from that session, which is um, some uh, or one of these, the, the raids that the kobolds did uh, happened at the, the town, the city, the village where um, Ali is from, our paladin Alistair. This is a view into the... Um, the backstory that I've received for Alistair and we, we're working on that information with that information to try and build what our next steps are for that character for Ali. So what we're looking at here is um, and I'm just going to read some of it verbatim um, in case you can't quite see the screen but I've blown the text up a bit. We've got Alistair uh, from a small coastal village called Belshire uh, has a pretty small population, maybe a hundred or so, mostly made up of halflings. And um, it was put in here several years back. I I'm reading it as several years is actually more than, I don't know, a handful. It, it, I, I feel like this is more like a 10 year period or so. Uh, and I think you'll get what I mean as I go through this a little bit. But several years ago, um, the... Or was it? Uh, after a relatively calm period, which was over a century, with nothing really new, outside of some visitors or occasional vendor, they were raided during the night while most were already in bed. The village was small and had known peace for so long they didn't have an established guard. Sounds okay. Again, we're talking about a small place, so I guess the village blacksmith and a few old knights and warriors were trying to repel the invaders. Um, but it wasn't enough. The village was left burned and in ruin. They lost family, warriors, crafters, builders, and they lost hope. Now, with this little spot here where it says they lost uh, family, uh, warriors, crafters, builders, uh, I worked with the player on this, and what we had determined was since um, uh, Allie's sister in this case named Belle. Her name is Arabella, which we can see right down there. Um, Arabella is one of the people who was missing, uh, presumed dead. And I had told our player that Belle, or the sister in this case, was um, going to be a a metal working jewel maker, jewelry maker. And she had been working on a special um, necklace for Allie during the time that this raid happened. And Allie had seen the work in progress, but never saw it finished. And what we're going to have as we kind of open um, within the Dragon's Horde is we're going to find that necklace completed. And that's going to give Allie the... the the incentive to immediately jump towards finding her sister. The only way that necklace would be completed would have been from her sister, and she definitely will need to find her. That's going to be a big part of it. So we're going to have that piece. That's going to kick us off here, and that's what's going to be um, that piece of losing crafters, family. Um, coincidentally, Belle, as Allie's sister, is part of her family, and is a crafter, so that, that works out with what the backstory is here. Um, they said, um, or, or going back to reading this, the remaining few left, uh, left with what they could, if anything. So I guess um, the idea here is after the raid happened, the, nobody wanted to hang around the town anymore, and the people that remained uh, just said, look, it was it, it's all burned to the ground, it's nasty, let's just get out. And that's what they did. Apparently here, we, we kind of jump a little back and forth. Um, but when the raid happened, Allie had awoke that night uh, to fire and the sounds of combat. Um, 
and let's see. Uh, I'm going to, all right. By the time she awoke, her father was already in the heat of battle. Uh, she raced to her sister's room, only to find it empty and all but destroyed. Um, and where Belle slept was completely torn apart as though someone were desperately searching for something. And going back with the lore of uh, Daramon here, what Daramon was searching for is platinum. Uh, I should say Daramon's followers, right? It's the kobolds out there. They're searching for the platinum and she's a worker of platinum. The idea being somewhere along the grapevine, the kobolds heard that somebody worked with platinum in this town. Um, and if you're going to work with it, it's a good chance you have some of the raw platinum nuggets or materials or, or bits cut from the platinum vein underground. That's a, a, the thing that they're really looking for. So they headed here uh, to find Belle. And as we learn the story here, Belle is gone, missing, again, presumed dead. Her things will also have been gone. Uh, and bloodstains, etc. Allie panicked, uh, fled outside, and froze. Everything she ever knew was falling, and she saw her father in a pool of blood. Horrible things uh, happening in this town, in this village, all in one night. And Allie becomes uh, paralyzed with the realization that she loses almost everything. And from there, it says, so Ellie hid and um, uh, hid until the fire and chaos died down and the sun came up and then she looked over the ruin and the burned out buildings that were um, from the raid and took Ashworthy as her name. It's a great way to explain where that name comes from. It's good. And then she vowed that she'd never be helpless again. She took this uh, opportunity to find a nearby town uh, where she immediately swore herself to knighthood and uh, swore that she would never let the same kind of thing happen again. Uh, she'd be ready to defend herself and others. We see that a little bit in the character, the way that the, uh, the player handles it. So Ali, Alistair, she... Uh, definitely wants to protect the others that are there. She had a lot of concern about the um, the werewolves in the town of uh, Legat. She also has lots of concern talking about how Tusk uh, has been bitten by a werewolf and we don't know what's going to happen to him. So we've got those pieces coming together. She's going to learn that her sister is most likely still alive because that necklace she was working on is going to be found whole and completed um, in the dragon's hoard. From there, there won't be too much of a lead except the book that mentions the raid on Belshire. And uh, the idea here is to just throw the, the necklace idea and uh, Belshire re rekindling the name, uh, perhaps too soon since it burned to the ground, but uh, we're going to throw those back at Allie, let her react, and hopefully um, the, the player finds a way to push the party into her story arc. Because if not, if we don't get that push from the player to get into Allie's story arc, um, I'll do it. And I like it so much better when a player can take that that desire for their character and make others go along with it. A good example is Chris with um, Alset. Alset really wants to learn more about this dragon, this dragon's lair, and um, we have him steering the party to get to where we are now over a few sessions. So he brought the party to, um, or from Breeford, where he first learned about the dragon and the Drake Piercer, which was the crossbow, etc., etc. That led the party to um, uh, heading in a certain direction where they found that stream and the stream was near the town of Lagat. They went to Lagat, and rather than helping or dealing with the town of sick people, um, 
uh, he was very he was very concerned about just getting up that stream, finding that dragon's lair. So I'll set really pushed everyone forward, and and all of the characters, the other players, found themselves saying, "Okay, we'll follow." Uh, I want to feel that same kind of thing where there's that vested interest from the other players as um, Alistair is very eager to figure out what happened to her sister. With all that said, let me bring us back into Foundry. Uh, Using one of the modules that's out there, I imported uh, a pre-made map, and this was just a pre-made map called Small Farm Village. And um, where we're going to go with this is we're going to say this is Bellevue, Belleville, and it's going to look almost identical to the way it was that Allie remembers before it burned down. I want to introduce um, a confusion within the character of Allie where when she left this area, it was burned to the ground. It was ashes. She actually adapt, adapted adopted the name Ashworthy as, a, as an homage to, to what happened. But I want her to reapproach the town. And when she gets back to Belshire, that town is going to be is fresh and whole. And she is going to see people that she could have sworn were dead because she saw them die. And I want it to be her questioning maybe what happened. And and it shouldn't be this way. I remember waking up. I remember the battle. Um, the uh, the thing that's going to to turn it here is eventually someone in the party is going to go along with what Ali says and they're going to learn uh, through some sort of check, a perception, an arcana, a something, that when the kobolds leave, they leave behind some magic of Daramon, which allows the town to look and act like like nothing changed, like they weren't raided. It's, it's kind of a way for Daramon to fly under the radar. Um, so that not everybody comes ser- uh, searching and seeking for the dragon so they can kill it. The dragon doesn't want to die. And again, this goes back to before it was actually killed and came back as a Draco Lich. But um, uh, Daramon has this magic. In this map, you'll see we've got this, what I think is a relatively large well uh, in the center of this town map. And this small farm village map is going to be the, the center of, um, I can't remember the name of this, Belshire. Uh, so it's going to be the center of that. That is where the magic, the magic item is going to be. There will be settled deep within the water, a um, uh, stone that is kind of, I mean, think of a modern day projector and it's just projecting images, but it's projecting kind of its own little reality. Uh, It takes what happened in the town leading up to the problems and kind of replays that over and over. So it shouldn't take long for the characters and the players to notice what's going on here is kind of just a replay. And uh, people passing through uh, since Belshire didn't have many visitors before, people passing through wouldn't really notice much of a difference, but people who came here for a purpose would definitely eventually learn what's going on, and that's what we want for the player characters. Within our map here, there will be several things. Um, at least one of these homes is going to be uh, Allie's home from when she was here years ago. And uh, one of them is going to be, let's see, so we've got, this is intended to be a farm village, right? But we're going to say right off the map is um, a body of water since it was a coastal town. Belshire is a coastal town. Uh, and, and I'm also thinking we haven't really taken any boat trips yet, so the players... Um, I'll see if we can get the players and the characters to take a boat trip. And uh, I'd like to do a little um, on-the-water encounter. Uh, 
I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet, but there will be something. Um, I don't know if it'll be a normal sea creature kind of thing, like a shark attack, or or if we're going to do some kind of like drowned zombies, or, or there'll be something that I want to link into another character's backstory. And with that, I need to, you know, pull in another piece of another backstory. And I'm trying to think about it right now. I might not have one handy. I should have done that. But in the next stream, uh, there will be that specifically. There will be something, if I can get them on a boat, <laughs> there will be something that comes from someone else's backstory that uh, it's going to ring a bell for that character. And that, that's something that I'll definitely want to put in where possible. And this is all part of getting the DM stuff together. I want to make sure that we have something that each character can relate to at least every other episode. We don't want to have to accommodate every character, every episode, but we do want to accommodate every character as often as we can. For me, that comes down to about every other episode. We play for about two hours at a time on our regular Adventures from the Stream stream, which is every other Monday night. Right now, it's a Monday night, the 17th of May. It is next Monday. Somebody can do the math, but uh, <laughs> that, that, that comes out to what? The, the 24th. So we'll be, we'll be live with the information I'm talking about right now on the 24th. When that happens, you're going to see where this town comes into play. We're going to see how we get Allie interested by, I'll go back here to the dragon's map, um, back down here where the mouse is there. That's the dragon's horde. It's not, not necessarily everything the dragon had, but it's a large part of it because the dragon is off Draco liching somewhere. Um, we're waiting for the care at this point. We're waiting for the characters to get up several more levels before even thinking about that encounter. I'm just keeping, I'm going to keep the dragon and Draco lich kind of in the backstory. So Chris having created the the dragon idea, and then me creating the dragon, and now Allie coming into the picture as uh, her part of the adventure. I'm going to take the same dragon. So that's going to be our common thread through every adventure through every character story something having to do with daramon will be in there when we get to the next one there will be you know maybe hundreds of years ago daramon did something to someone else's village we're going to have all those things together and by the idea is by the very end we want all of the characters to have a common goal to confront Daramon. That's the hope. We'll see. We'll see how it works out with the way the players handle it, with the way the characters react to it, and whatever I'm able to bring into the story uh, all along the way. Remember, we've got so many different paths we can take. Uh, anybody who's familiar with a role playing game that is not a published adventure knows when you sandbox a role-playing game, you can go in so many different directions. You may also be familiar with the term railroading. What we'll be doing throughout the adventures from the stream in our world of Courageous is what I would call a sandboxed railroad. Our world is open, but within that open world, anywhere the players choose to go with their characters, they're going to find something familiar, something that keeps tying things together. And that part is what I would call, and I'll do the air quotes, the railroad. The railroad is making sure we keep, we keep the theme going throughout, not necessarily forcing the players down one path versus another, but forcing the characters to keep recognizing similarities in everything they do, or I should say nearly everything. We'll have plenty of little side things that mean nothing to the main story. Uh, an example of that before we close out for the night, um, the werewolf scene was just designed to test 
player characters and combat and learn how strong our characters were versus what was going to happen in the world to them. And after encountering the werewolves where they did, near that stream uh, in the hill, it was only because Tusk got bitten that I chose, I'm going to introduce another werewolf element into this story, but it's not integral to the story at all. The whole town of Lagat being uh, stricken by lycanthropy, that really goes to exacerbating Tusk's problem more so than uh, furthering the story at all. So just as a side note, it's kind of neat stuff that, that you can do. I put a whole little side adventure in there that the players didn't bite for, uh, <laughs> pun intended, I guess. There's a town of werewolves that's going to eat themselves and kill themselves, and the players just kind of steered right past it. <laughs> we'll see if they get back to it, but it's an interesting little bit that just kind of hung off to the side. So let's see, going back to what you can expect for the preparation, what I've done, what you can expect to get out of next session. Uh, our players, I should have stayed right there, our players are going to find their characters right here in the Dragon's Lair. That's where we're starting off. I'm expecting between dealing with traps and what's in this room, um, maybe a half hour of, of exploration and trap disarming and sneaking around and, and learning stuff um, in order to get to that necklace, which will sp hopefully spur Allie to say, we've got to go back to, to Belshire. We've got to go there. We've got to go there. Um, and, and as a side note, in our um, outside of the game chat, I will be chatting with um, Allie's uh, player to say, I need you to push this because I want it to be pushed from the player and the character's perspective, and then I can reinforce. If you say, we really need to do this, we really need to go there, I can sit back and say, ah, you know, I think she's right. <laughs> and that, that, um, that just lets me help reinforce what a player's done without necessarily having to um, let the player do all the work or do all the work myself collaborative we work together so we have that necklace come up we have Ali's players saying we've got to go we've got to go to Belshire and then I try a little side bit there like I'd mentioned earlier we're going to get them on some kind of boat since uh, Belshire is a coastal village see if we can find a way to get them onto a boat to uh, sail there have some sort of of on the water encounter that I'm going to try and link to someone else's backstory. Ideally, in this case, it would be um, Marty, so Jason's character, or Tusk, Randy's character, and we find something in their backstory that may have something to do with water, um, sailing, something. I'll, I'll look for that. But that's a little side bit to keep them interested, but not pull them off of the trail of Allie's adventure. At the end of the boat trip, we end in Belshire, and Belshire will hopefully be very confusing to Allie as she arrives, as the town looks like it was the day before the raid. We'll try and figure out that mystery there. And I'm expecting that will easily fill the next episode, the next um, two-hour episode session. And then um, well, I'll be doing at least another one of these uh, behind the Adventures from the Stream to show what happened versus what we talked about ahead of time and, and see where that fits together. There will also be another series of Adventures from the Behind the Adventures from the Stream where... Um, I'll be working with Ali's player to to show some basics for DMing, at least in the style that I like to DM. And it will be a how to train your DM kind of session. We'll have that going, and that's going to be up soon. Uh, a little bit of advice in the background, as well as just learning. We'll, we'll be uh, having a couple of different people learning a style of storytelling and um, adventure bringing that 
gets us all onto the a one place where we can play a game together with one person running the world and everyone else having fun as players. That's what we'll be doing soon. I'm going to get ready to wrap this one up. If I could figure out where the heck I put the exit video. It's around here somewhere, right? Um, la, 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 la. In, um, in the meantime, again, find us on Facebook, YouTube, like, subscribe, um, smash that like button. Find us wherever you can and like us wherever you can. Our audio podcast got onto um, Amazon Music Podcasts earlier today. If you're looking for audio podcasts to keep your ears happy for a while, we have literally hundreds of episodes with adventures and gaming systems going back six or seven years now. Lots of stuff to listen to. Really good stuff out there. Hope you enjoy it. We're getting ready to uh, knock this one out. And let me see if I can uh, get this exit thingy over to the right monitor. There. We'll catch you around the next time on Behind the Adventures from the Screen.